I was sitting backstage at Green to Gown, like that charity event. And I've, I've, I've kind of been feeling overworked and a little overpressured. And sometimes the weird thing about when you're stressed, you start to get these negative thoughts about not doing well enough what I do. And I just started writing down all of these different things that happened this year. And I went through my calendar and I realized that 2019, 2019 was the most insane year for me. I've had so much stuff going on. So what I wanted to do was I want to tell you guys why I wrote this stuff down. Then I want to go through the year and then at the end I'll tell you what I've learned. So this is a book I got for Christmas. We I started writing in it when I was backstage just to kind of see what I've actually done this year. So this is a little 2019. What did Simon Talbot do? Welcome to the recap of the year 2019 through the eyes of the father, Simon Tickety Talbot. This is the Book of Talbot. <laughs> the biggest thing that happened this year is I got married. Whee! I got married to the girl of my dreams. Katrina K -K 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 Kola, and now she's called Katrina Kola Talbot. <laughs> I I wanted to brand that into her forehead. Just put Talbot. So whenever she goes out, people can see that she is part of the family. I don't know if any. I'm guessing some of you guys in the chat are married as well, and you know that setting up a wedding is a big deal. It's a big ordeal. There's a lot of stuff to take care of, and I didn't really do anything. <laughs> <laughs> she she did all this work and then she showed me oh would you this or this is this and I'd be like left lefty lefty one so that was the extent of my work had she put so much work into it imagine just having a party for 80 people just do that in your head just do a little and you have to take care of everything insane so huge shout out to the wife for taking care of the wedding then I went on my honeymoon we honeymoon that's probably that's the, yeah, this, besides getting married, that's the second biggest thing that happened this year. We had a great time and we thought about all of these different things we wanted to do. And then uh, we wound up going to Africa mainly. Of course, we started out in Edinburgh, then we went to Dubai for a while, then we went to Tanzania and we went to uh, Kenya, we went to Uganda, all of these different places and it's a, it's a trip I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Had a great time and it was really needed. I really needed that long break because we did like, what, three weeks, three and a half weeks or something. And uh, I spent a lot of time with the wife. So she, she wrote all my new material so I could just basically steal her jokes and do a new show. Life hack. So make sure you take breaks, guys. Don't burn out. Don't get tired. Feel happy. Of course, the honeymoon started out at the Fringe Festival, which was a big dream for me as well. Uh, uh, another thing I got accomplished this year is I did some work in progress tour shows at the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, which is uh, the biggest arts festival in the world. In the world, there's like 3,000 shows or 3,000 performers in that month. It's insane. But I got to do, I think, was it four or five shows? So people in Scotland and in Edinburgh don't know who I am. Uh, so I, I had to sell tickets based on just, oh, this guy is a Danish stand-up comedian. He's doing well in Denmark. Now he's transitioning to English, working on an English show. And he's a, you know, ex-Jehovah's Witness. His father's Irish. And he's going to tell his story. And then just hand out flowers with that. And see if that sold tickets. And it did. And that was the first week of the honeymoon. How romantic am I? <laughs> just Katrina hanging out with me, trying to give me notes for the show so I could get more of her jokes into the show instead of my own crappy jokes. And next year I'm planning on doing a full run, a full month at the Fringe Festival. 26 shows or something in a month. Yeah. And in January, at the very beginning of the year, I had a massive goal I ticked off, which was to do an English-speaking set 
on a on a show, an English show, and I did the Russell Howard Hour in England. That Russell Howard Hour spot was such a big uh, accomplishment for me, and I have to thank all the people, uh, Russell Howard and my English management Avalon, for letting me do that spot. There's no way I could have done it without them, because I've been working for a few few years trying to get something off the ground. Just kept getting nose and nose and nose. And then I got to do that spot, and from what I've realized so far, it's got like I think eight, nine hundred thousand views on YouTube and a million views on my Facebook page or something. It's just insane the response on that bit. It's the biggest, like of all the stuff I've put online, this is this is the biggest thing. I have a hard time focusing. <laughs> What else happened? Let me just see. Married, check. Honeymoon, check. Fringe Festival, check. Russell Howard Hour, check. Then I did uh, Make Denmark Great Again. My biggest uh, one-man show so far. I started that show in 2018. And because there are so many lovely people out there, I'm overwhelmed by the amount of people who want to come watch my shows, especially this last one. So we had to expand the tour all the way through 2019. We did shows in February, we did shows in May, I think, as well. Uh, and one, I think, was shown in June as well. Just extra, extra shows. We sold 50,000 tickets. <laughs> Insane! Because I haven't done any TV. I wanted to focus on the English material, doing English stuff. So I've basically been living in the States and in London and just l working on my English act instead of doing Danish TV. So I was afraid, like, oh, are people still gonna remember me? And I've been working at that show for so long and all that stuff all of that stuff came to fruition in, in 2019. Finished off that tour with a bang, uh, literally. Yeah, so, and, and put it out on my website and it's on TV Tool Play and I've gotten so much positive response from people watching it and saying it, it's, it's funny. Uh, NV Noom says, do it, got show mate. Says, hey, it was a good show mate. Ah, thanks. A Danish compliment, a guy, a guy going, hey, dude, got show, mate. That was a pretty good show, mate. That's like an American going, you're like a god. You're the best ever. How I couldn't, like, I literally peed my pants and then my intestines fell out of me because it was so funny. I've been putting my face together with plastic surgery for years after watching that show because my eyes popped out of my head because you're literally the funniest person ever to walk this earth. Do you walk on water? Because even if you did that, I bet that would be hilarious as well. <laughs> so thank you. So make Denmark great again. Check. Then in between the tour, I did a work in progress tour. A small tour, small venues. And I wrote new material. And I did that stuff in English as well. And I invited English and, and comedians who lived in, in America over to join me on those shows. So I did a show with them. Russell Howard, Matt Kirshen, Ray Badron, and Pierre Nouvelli. <laughs> Insane. And every time with those guys, I filmed them. And uh, yeah, and we played some video games and I'm gonna post that stuff on my YouTube channel. Nice and easy. Look at this stuff. I can't believe I actually had the energy and time to, to get it done. But And I'd like to thank the comedians who wanted to beyond that. So thanks a lot. Check. Did that in 2019. What else happened this year? I did a lot of corporate gigs. So I had a lot of corporate gigs as well this year and a lot of corporate gigs in English. I did a show for Copenhagen Business School. Uh, I did one for Novo Nordisk where I was like the MC for the night all in English. I did a show for uh, Mask but not really Mask. That's what I realized when I got there. I like that it really tests the quality of my material. If you just perform for people who like you, they tend to laugh at your style because they like you. But when you do a corporate gig, it can be like from a 16 year old to a 60 year old all in one room and you have to find some way to navigate that. Because then I can really test, oh, is this joke actually good enough? Or do people at comedy clubs just laugh because they're having a good time and they're in a good mood? Sometimes it's hard to pinpoint that but it's not difficult to pinpoint if you're dodging like a Christmas ball after a punchline like whoa okay he didn't like that one 
scratch that. So that's another big check, a whole bunch of English speaking gigs this year, corporate gigs in Denmark, which is great because I get to perform for English speaking people and I don't have to fly, I can still drive um, and we're all about saving the world. So that's great. Started Twitch streaming. I, I've been wanting to Twitch stream since, yeah, well, a long time. Well, I started working actively towards Twitch streaming in 2018, in September, I think. But, you know, life happens and I did all this stand up and went to England all of a sudden, got this opportunity to, to do the show in England on the Russell Howard Hour. And, and it took longer than I expected because I had to build this entire office, basically. So this used to be my workspace. So I tore all of the stuff out, you know, had this table built that's made to measure, talked with, uh, had meetings with different guys who knew a lot about sound. I had my lighting friends come over to help me with these. What should I buy? What should I set up? I had a uh, Kaime, Jan, these great, especially Kaime, great Danish streamer, helped me with the, with the setup. And then all of this stuff put in, have some, the entire wall behind the green screen is basically just shelves with uh, different stuff on it. So put that up as well. Of course, all the graphics, as you can see, the sweet swipes. Hwa! Hwa! Did some press photos for that and set up the swipes and uh, the graphics designer and everything. And then we, I got to launch the Twitch. Woohoo! That was uh, Twitch. I started Twitch streaming. A huge dream come true for me. Ever since I started doing stand-up, I wanted to do something with gaming and now I can do it. And I don't have to listen to any television executives going, well, is it broad enough? Do people, well, if we play Counter-Strike, even see us, is, is there enough play people understanding of Jump King, what is that really? Do you want a horror games? I don't think young people would like to see horror games because it has to be family friendly. I can just do whatever I want. We can't have you sitting there and just talking to people. Who'd want to watch that for hours? You don't tell me what to do. I had another goal on my goal board. Things I wanted to achieve, which I wanted to create my first YouTube video. And I did. I just created my own YouTube video. I'm still working on streamlining the process. But uh, I'm, I'm starting to, to upload YouTube videos. And um, I just uploaded one today, actually, at 11 o'clock. And I really want to start just pumping out videos, you guys. So, YouTube, check! Then, I did a dummy for English TV. A dummy for English TV. I went over, I did a dummy with uh, Peter Crouch, uh, the footballer. Alex Horn, the guy who created Taskmaster, was on that as well. Did that, had fun. Did a little roast, represented Denmark. That's a dream come true, to start penetrating the English market with some TV. And I opened for Pat Oswald this year as well, in English, at DR Concerthuset. He was like, and he still is, one of my favorite comedians. Like, I think he's one of the best of all time. My style is, I, w I wouldn't even say that my style is close to him, but some of the ways that he writes, I try to emulate. Uh, the way he th structures material, I think he's amazing. And I met him this year and I opened for him, which was such a surreal experience for me. I just can't even get over that that happened because he means a lot to me. Not as much as the family, of course. And he laughed at my set and I got to hug him. Going off stage, I hugged Pat Oswald. He was like, that was great. And then he went on stage and he quoted one of my jokes on stage. He talked about, oh, that was great. He just started talking about the stuff in my act that he loved and he tweeted my name and tweeted uh, a, like a quote from one of my jokes and he said thanks for supporting me and that I did a good job and uh, I, I'm just it was so goddamn surreal. An amazing experience. Check. I hosted Danish Game Awards. Uh, even people who don't understand Twitch or YouTube, they understand award shows. So I was hoping to, I'm trying to bridge that gap between my regular audience and the Twitch YouTube gamers. People who love video games like me. Trying to bring us all together in a fusion. 
in the to a huge transformer. Yep, 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 yep. And then we take over the world, basically, and make horrible movies. So I host the Danish Game Awards. Check. Then I became an ambassador for Iftertro, which is a non-profit, which is a, a support group for people who grew up in religious uh, environments and kind of want to, you know, they're maybe they're they're stumbling afterwards, trying to find themselves. You know, they don't want to go to India and do some Bikram yoga and get fondled. Yeah. They're like, you know what? I just want to find some new people to drink coffee with and eat, some, eat a piece of cake and talk about doubts and life and how they're finding new people to hang out with. And I'm, I'm so overwhelmed by the positive support of that. And of course, I would recommend people who, who feel like they're alone to go find something to do. If it's not a support group, just go do something where you meet people. And preferably, you can go to twitch.tv slash Simon Talbot Comedy. Hang out with the family. Yes, welcome. We shall accept thee and you will feel welcome. That is how you get over the worst traumas. So of course, you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit like, smash like, comment, and that will make you feel included. Not a cult, by the way. Remember to subscribe, donate. Not a cult, not a cult. Amen. <laughs> so, if that's all, check. And uh, I gained five pound, five kilos of muscle. <laughs> Isn't that the most embarrassing thing to admit? that I tried to do. That's embarrassing. I don't know. It's because I think being vain or like trying to improve yourself physically, I think it's, I, I grew up just hating people, hated the guys who cared about their clothes and they wanted to look good. It's just fucking, ah, I just, so even when I talk about, I'm going to the gym and I'm trying to, okay, I want to gain five pounds of, uh, five kilos of, of muscle. That was a goal this year. And I actually did it. I gained like nine kilos <laughs> or like eight kilos, but I think most of it is muscle, hopefully. And it's such an embarrassing thing to admit. I don't know why. I think that's something that's wrong with me. Just an old trauma of hating people who care too much about how they look. Then at the very end, I was a part of Green to Gown, the Save the Children charity show. So 2019 done. Check. Woof. We did it. I did this checklist because I was feeling worn out. I was a little tired and I felt like oh, I'm not. I'm, why am I? I'm not doing well enough. I should do better. Like, oh, I just because you sometimes you just you can only focus on the thing you're doing right now. That's well how I feel. Instead of just looking at everything I do, I kind of just try to instead of looking at it like this, like this is what I have to do. I kind of flip it around and then you just take one thing at a time. So you only look at the thing that's right in front of you. So I started writing down everything I've done this year and I started flipping it around and I looked at all of the stuff I did as I went through my, my calendar and I popped it in and I just realized that 2019 has been the best year of my life. That wedding, the wedding was the biggest thing. That was by far the biggest thing. Seeing all the people who wanted to come support the wedding and, and, and wanted to come party and hang out and just all of these lovely people in my life. All of this work stuff doesn't matter. What matters the most are the people around you. Uh, thanks uh, for all the support and thanks for being part of the family. Woo! That's the wife. Do it! Words can bring you down. <laughs> Mmm, that's some nostril slash banana ASMR right there. There we go. Thank you so much for getting through the 2019. Now I've got some news for 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we've been kind of thinking about acquiring a pet. Getting a little pet to hang out with. Uh, so we kind of want something that can take care of itself. But at the same time, it's great to snuggle with. I've never had any pets in my childhood. I never grew up with pets. But Katrina, because she's basically lived the life of a fairy tale, 
they had a huge tree in the backyard with a swing and she'd lie out there in the summer and play with her cats and all the different pets. Oh, 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 oh. But I've never had, had pets. I've, I thought I kind of wanted, wanted a dog, but I feel bad for having a dog here because then we had to do the uh, at least two walks a day and you know, it, it would they require so much attention and they go crazy if you're not there constantly. So we, we wanted something that could kind of take care of itself. So I started Googling. We wanted a little kitty cat. So it wouldn't require too much. Yes, and then we've got cats. Yeah, Nicholas Paul, oh, cats live their own lives. Yes, they do. Especially if they've got... If you've got two of them. If you've got two little kitty cats. Then they can kind of have fun together. And then you hang out with them and you play with them. But they can also play with each other. What do you guys think I should name them? It looks so fluffy. Yes, Yoda. It's a goddamn baby Yoda. This is the second one. It's a male. Like, the Yoda is a female. He's gonna be so massive. And his name... We've got some... Have any guesses? Yes. We've got Chewbacca. His name is gonna be Darth. Meet Darth. <laughs> We've got Yoda and Darth. Gonna hang out. Right here on the stream. <laughs> Let's expand this. Let's grow the family. And uh, if you want to help me expand, I'm actually looking to uh, hire some people on my team. Because I've already gra uh, got great editors uh, helping me with, with the videos I've put out. But I need more because the workload is... I'm putting out too much stuff. Uh, so long story short, if you're out there or you know someone out there who's an editor, would like to do to help me be on the Simon Tappet team, then you can um, uh, write me an email, stcomedyedit at gmail.com. If you're an editor, maybe you're a graphic designer, you know, you can help me do some thumbnails or pop some stuff in the videos, or maybe you'd like, you, you know how to do animations. So when I tell stories, you can animate them and make them come to life. Or maybe you're good with audio when I'm gonna put out, hopefully doing some podcasting. You can help me with the, uh, like the audio universe. Put some dragons in there into my stories to make them seem more interesting than they really are. Who loves, or maybe you know how to hold a camera. So when I'm out, maybe I'm going to London, maybe I'm going somewhere else. And then I need someone to film so we can do some vlogging. Maybe you can, we can do my beauty routine in the morning. So you film me when I apply products and it's gonna just be so fabulous. So much stuff to come in 2020, you guys. 2019, check. Let's make 2020 even better. Write me an email if you wanna help out. Hit like and subscribe, comment if there's something you want me to talk about or a video you wanna see. If you have any questions, maybe I'll do a video and answer some of your questions. Um, and uh, let's just grow this in 2020. Let's make it even bigger, even better. Thanks for supporting. Love you. Mwah!